A bit nervous. A little bit. Okay. But you're happy to do this? Definitely. And comfortable as well. With those nerves. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think it's the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do. Today I'm sitting with Mohale Mutao. Most of us were introduced to Mohale back in 2017 and since then he has been trending. Sometimes for good reasons, sometimes for not so good reasons and sometimes also about that union that he had with uh, Sumiz Mutao, which is something I guess that continues to haunt him. Uh, but we'll get more insights with regards to that. We're calling this one Mohale on the record. Thank you again for joining us, Mohale. Um, and thanks for sitting down with us to have this conversation. But Thank when you, you look at me. your family, what defines that dynamic of the Mudaung family? I've been blessed with, with a beautiful family. And we're a family of love. We're a family that prays. And I think having grown up in that setup really has contributed a lot to to who I am mm -hmm. as, as a person and who I am to other people. And tell us about the role of education, the role that it played in your family. So so education is, is quite big. I mean, my, my dad currently is doing his, his master's and he's probably really approaching his 70s. Uh, your but dad is doing his master's now? He's doing his master's at wow. the moment. Yeah, wow. he's doing his master's in, in law. Yeah. Um, and, and my mom is, is also from, from a law background. They believe that you need to go to school, um, get a job and work, and education is really the key to success. Do you think that that played a role in you becoming a head boy? I think it quite did. I mean, my dad was was head boy himself, and he has always gotten all of these managerial positions at work. And ultimately, because he's, he's one person that I look up to the most, I really wanted to be like him. And, and when I got to the role of, of being head boy, he literally said to me, I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so if it didn't happen, it would have been a great disappointment. He wouldn't have think? said it. <laughs> okay, he would have kept quiet. He would have kept quiet. Mohan, yeah. all in all, we have three children. First one, it's a daughter. Her name is Balesa. The second one, it's Mohali. And the third one is Mateo. Being the biggest sister for Mohali is, it's easy. I would say he was perfect, you know? I would be lying. My relationship with Mohali growing up was pretty fun because the age gap between us is only five years, so I could relate to him more. Um, we played a lot. At some point, I think we even took baths together. He was very uh, talkative. I used to do my hair in a lady. I will always take him along. Then whenever we arrive at my hairstylist, he will like talk so many things. While the lady was busy with my hair, he will keep on saying to the lady, the lady's name was Mobe. Mobe, omotone mama kane, omotone hand. Make sure that you are going to make my mother beautiful. That's how talkative he was. When tertiary life started, that's when maybe na halepangan, I explore and being now, you know, out of hand in Ghana. To us, he is special because two kids had passed on before he arrived into this world. We decided then as a family that we are going to give him the name of Muhali. He is the brave one to show the world, I am here, I am the fighter, and I am going to succeed, the brave one. Is that kid, you know, the, the, I don't want to say favorite, but I mean, he is the favorite. And I'm not mad about it because he's doing great. I always call myself Oso Mutonna. I'm overprotective. Well, now it's nice. <laughs> My brother's a celebrity, you know, that type of, but yeah, and I'm still overprotective, still. Well, he was four months old more. Oh, he was, uh, Four months old here. He's sitting outside with a granny. Yeah? Three years. Where were we here? What yeah. is this house? Protea Clan. Oh, in our house in Protea Clan. Grade 11. Grade 11. Mm -hmm. was, was he already 
head boy at the... No, head boy, head boy is here. Oh. Metric. This is the last one where he was a head boy. This is wonderful. What I'd like to say to Mahali is that um, I'm proud of who he is today. And I know that, you know, some of the things that people say do get to him, but I know he's stronger than that. And he's already doing great at doing that. I just want him to keep it going and really just continue being him and not have other people's opinion change the way that he is. He became this strong man that we are proud of him today. And that's what I love about him. I just hope that he will remain like that. On my side, my wish, I still say my wish, uh, if Mahali can finish his degree, I'll be the happiest person on earth. I'm praying for him a lot. I will always pray for him, even if it means it's 3 o'clock, 3 a.m., I will wake up, I will pray for him. Wherever he is, he is in my prayers as a mother. When I was head boy, it was more about being an example, uh, more than it was about me being head boy. It was a beautiful journey because it taught me a lot about myself as well. Yeah. There's another dynamic to it, because I know in school you face a lot of bullies at that time. Um, did you know that you were gay already? <sighs> school, you face a lot of bullies at that time. Um, did you know that you were gay already? So, so at that time, I really didn't know I was gay. I just knew I was different. Yeah. Um, because I would sort of question the attraction I had towards girls and how I would feel when I'm either with another boy. So I knew I was different. I didn't know that it was called being gay or what being gay was. Mm -hmm. And when did it happen for you though? When so, did the realization happen? So it happened when I was in, in matric. I was, I was smart enough to sort of start researching why I feel the way that I feel. Mm -hmm. And I started realizing that I actually have an attraction for for men. Did you have a boyfriend? I didn't have a boyfriend. I actually had a Dude, girlfriend. Where's the girlfriend now? <laughs> <laughs> she's on Facebook. <laughs> she's, she's, she's around. But would you say that, you, that you're gay or bisexual? Um, is, is it straight cut? I, I'd say I'm gay. You're gay? Definitely gay. Uh, but you know, in another season, you spoke about, you know, trying out um, women. Yes, I, I think it was more from a perspective of of having children, um, not not trying them out, particularly in terms of, of dating them. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I, I do want to have children and obviously uh, women yeah. <laughs> are that. Yes. And the person that you're having this conversation with is um, Somizi. Yes. And I want to go back to the day that you were in that queue. Yes. Um, about to get your book signed. Yes. Um, did you think that life would turn out the way that it did for you? You took me from where I was and you put me in a place where I have re realized what real love is. So, Harley. <laughs> Will you marry me? Yes! <laughs> would turn out the way that it did for you? Definitely not, because even with going to the book signing, my cousin who is from Kimberley was coming to Johannesburg. He said, hey, I've got a gift for you. Turns out the, the gift was Sumizi's, Sumizi's book. And when he arrived in Johannesburg, he then said to me, there's also a book signing happening. Mm. And uh, we then went to the book signing. And as we stood in the queue, I got a call. Before the call, he kept on pointing at me with the pen. Um, and then when I came back to the line, my cousin was already with Sumizi signing the book. And Sumizi refused to 
to sign my cousin's book unless I was back from the call that I was making. Um, and then I came back and the rest is history. The rest is history. <laughs> but were you a fan before you got there? I, I wasn't a fan. I, I just liked how he advocated for being himself. And, and but how... you, of course, knew of him and knew about him. Yes, yes, definitely. I mean, I think he was all over television. I knew that he was on Sarafina. I don't know if you've watched the latest season of uh, Living the Dream. Do you watch it all? I don't. Uh, I, I was shocked the other day that actually, you know, my name came up a lot in the program because... Well, it comes up every episode. Oh, yes, it does. <laughs> and... There was a, a legal document that was binding the both of us from speaking about each other on platforms like these. But the thing with this one, and, and going back to the conversation about being a fan, is that not necessarily Sumizi raising this, but um, his daughter mm. and her mom raising this issue that it was almost like a fan meet celebrity type of relationship. Mm. The fact that they met at his book launch and he was a fan who wanted an autograph, we already know that the dynamic there is already fan celebrity. Look, I think I, I can't really uh, speak for them. That is how they, they probably saw it and see it with other people because they, they spend a lot of time with Sumizi around people who are, who are his fans. Mm -hmm. I was definitely not a fan. Mm -hmm. after, that, after that, um, the phone number exchange, did you guys decide that, actually, let's go for this? There was no phone number exchange. So on the 25th of September, 2017, I received a DM from Sumizi. Okay. He made a pic mix of our pictures and he said to me, this is how we're going to look on our wedding day. I really didn't take anything seriously because I wasn't sure what that was. And I really didn't think that he would want to pursue a relationship with me. Even though he was in my DMs, we then went on our, our first date. Um, is this on the 24th of September? This is on the 24th of September. It was a Sunday. He was coming from Idols. It was him and his six friends. So I wouldn't really call that a date because it was but more it was of a... an anniversary. You guys called it an anniversary. It was definitely, yeah. but I, I think the date itself was centered more around his friends being there. So there was no conversation between us. And it was only three weeks later when we took a trip to Swaziland when I, I sort of got to know him and I realized that I, I actually like him mm -hmm. and there could possibly be something that comes out of this. In that moment when it was you with the friends, was Vusi there? No, I actually only met Vusi three years into my relationship with yeah. Samizi. And when you first met Vusi then, what did you make of how he perceived your relationship? There was not much that happened with Vusi in the picture. Um, I didn't know much about him and I wasn't sure how much he knew of me because there was never any discussion uh, with Vusi besides him trying or wanting to save the relationship. Trying to save which relationship? So when the relationship was, was sort of taking its toll and we were not okay, um, Vosu would always be the one to, to intervene. In that, he, he would call me and say, please um, fix things with my friend. Mm. And that's, that's literally the only time. But in this season, Vosu is the same person who said that he didn't like you. Did I like Mohale? No. No? I only tolerated him because so means he loved him so much. I was particularly shocked because I didn't spend much time with Vosi. And I think Vosi came to the house probably three times when I was there. So I wasn't sure how he reached a conclusion to say he didn't like me. 
I wouldn't really have much to say. But it, it, it seems strange, don't you think? Thing. That um, here's somebody who, when you guys first started hitting your stumbling blocks as, as a couple, was a person who was calling you to say, please fix things with my friends. Mm. And the same person now comes out to say that he never really liked you. If that was his way of looking out for his friend to say that he didn't like me because of where the relationship is at the moment or what's currently going on, then so be it. Because he says that the relationship also changed um, Sumizi. Sumizi so spent quite a few years without being with Fusi. So I'm not sure how he says that change happened when Sumizi met me, when they hadn't been so close for a couple of years. So the change that he's talking about might have been an inevitable change that happened when he was not friends with Sumizi before Sumizi met Okay, what about Tommy? He seemed to be rooting for you guys when um, you got engaged, you know? Yes, he was there. He was there, he was taking videos. His friendship with Sumizi was a beautiful one. And I just knew it from that. How would you allow us to go? Don't, don't, don't make shake me. <laughs> You are allow us to remain in, in water for two hours. <laughs> and just last night I was very this close to post the celebration of my friend. Mm, and you drank. And I was lit. That's your friend, Flop. I will carry you in my heart forever. Aww. However, I do know that they are no longer friends anymore. They're no longer friends? No. And you don't know why? at all. I find it interesting because when you guys went to, I think it was Amsterdam, and there was the engagement that took place and a Orlando then popped up. Mm. Um, and well, you seemed very, very uncomfortable and you'll tell us why, why you felt uncomfortable, but even Tommy felt uncomfortable. I think Tommy felt uncomfortable because he, he sort of had a chat with me to, to, to just ask me if I'm okay. Yeah. And I, I just said, no, I, I have questions um, about, you know, what is, what is currently going on. Say <laughs> 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 I'm sleeping there. You see your place. Oh, you have my time. I've been saying to somebody, somebody, please, just remember, why, why we don't swamping? You'll go back to your fiancé. I will entertain this one. Listen, my name is Anna. Bra G Fall. Brasso. And what was going on in your mind? What did you think was happening? I think it's more about what I knew was happening. Wh what do you mean? They've been talking for quite some time before meeting. Mm -hmm. And he introduced him to me as, as his friend. Uh, little did I know that they, they've been, you know, wanting to pursue a relationship. How do you know that? Uh, so Miz and I had the conversation about Orlando, and he decided to, to tell me what was going on, that the plan was to, to pursue each other, and they had been talking for quite some time. Um, so they were meeting for the first time. We understand, um, at least from, from the show, um, that he was planning on proposing but at the same time, he was speaking to Orlando, who he was pursuing. With, with him planning the proposal and him planning to meet with Orlando, I think I wouldn't have much to say on that because I don't know why he did that. Um, but when he was explaining it to me, he just said that Orlando is, is now going to be his friend no longer be together. Yeah, because there's a scene where Orlando says to him, you're cheating on me now. I don't know if it was a joke or what. I am not sure. <laughs> but as far as you know, as far as I it know, was they... just the, him or them pursuing each other. Yes. The night we were in Amsterdam, we were at a, a club. They were particularly very cozy. And because I wasn't comfortable, I said, may I please go to the hotel to go and sleep? Mm. And I left him at the club with... Orlando and Tammy, and they came back the following morning. They never got into a relationship? As far as I know. 
in, in, in the leak audio that we'll speak about a bit later on as well, you also make reference to Amsterdam, and this is now in relation to bringing in another person into your relationship or your sexual relationship yes. and the sex that you guys would have. Do you know who that person was? Was that during the same period? It was Orlando. How so the, advance, the advance of, of the, the threesome happening was made in Orlando's presence. How? How did this play out? We're dancing, we're having fun, and then Sumizu walks up to me and says, walks up to me and says, um, what do you think about threesomes? And it's the first time that you... It is, it is the first time, oh. yes. And I'm like, hey, I've, I've never really uh, had to think about them because I've never had, you know, the desire to, to do anything of that sort. And I then proceeded to ask, why would you ask me this question? And then he said, no, because I think, you know, we should have a, a threesome with Orlando. And I was, I was shocked. But this would be just the day after you guys got engaged? Yes, the day after we got engaged. Wasn't that like a red flag for you? It wasn't a red flag then because he said to me that there was nothing happening. I overlooked everything. Mm. Do you regret it in hindsight? I, I don't because don't. I, I, I was in love and I just wanted to see our relationship working out. Anything else at that point didn't really matter. Then it is the planning of the wedding. Yes. Um, how did you feel at that time? I, I had a lot of mixed feelings the following day um, because, you know, this all happened very quickly and we had had a conversation about marriage, you know, uh, a, a few weeks before the, the engagement. And I, and I think I was very, I'd say hurt that the conversation that we had was not honored. But then why did you say yes? And why did you say yes? I said yes because I wanted to. I loved him. I, I think because of how we, we felt about each other, we put the love before everything. And also when you get reassurance from that person that that would never happen again, uh, and because you love them, you, you, you will definitely move on. So that, that Europe trip, you, you left there with some level of, there were broken promises here already. I definitely did because I thought that the conversation and, and the incident that happened would have counted for a lot over shooting a reality show and proposing to me on television. So you feel that it was more about the reality show? I feel like the conversation and the incident was not taken. Why did you play part in all of it? For instance, you guys had had a conversation about marriage before, um, a broken promise. There's the Orlando incident that happens. And again, you, you still continue. At that point, I told myself to understand that it's a relationship we're trying to build. I mean, this was five months into the relationship. The, then the, 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 the taking the relationship public in the way that it happened, was there a conversation that happened around that as well? I particularly didn't want the relationship to go public. Um, but he insisted that, you know, we, we post a picture together and he wanted to announce our relationship to the world. Again, you buckled. With the conversations that we would have, he would be very firm in saying that He's been around. Is it firm or controlling? Work. There's a thin line. But there were moments of control. Definitely. I was still 22. I think anybody can attest that at the age of 22, you're gullible to believe anyone who is 24 years older than you. And for you, you think it was him playing on that age gap? Because there is a power dynamic at play that we can't deny. Yes. And there's a person with economic power in that relationship as well. Do you think that that was, that was it? So Misa had everything figured out in his life, from his career to his personal life to whatever that he wanted to achieve. This whole puzzle, the only missing puzzle in his life was marriage. He wanted to do whatever that it took to make sure that the puzzle is complete and the puzzle is perfect. So, so would you say that you were, you were porn in the relationship? Not being a perfect puzzle piece was a problem. Do you think you were naive? I was in love. Thank you. What sort of joy did it bring you? 
so if I there was, was any. I was really myself when I was with him. Yeah. And I could I could express myself in in many ways, and he would, you know, understand even when he didn't have to. And he he would go out out of his way to to spend time with me, knowing very well that his schedule is very hectic, and that meant a lot to me. Mm. And that is that is joy that is amazing because. There's nothing as beautiful as someone giving you his time. Yeah. There's also another part around it that is, it requires a lot of bravery that says that I am now going to be vulnerable and speak about something that has happened to me. And one of those instances is you speak about an assault that had taken place. He hit me on the road with his car. So did you hit him? I think it's also not even about did I hit him or did I not hit him? People look at the reaction mm -hmm. and what caused the reaction. But you are saying that as part, as far as you are concerned, these are things that have happened. You speak about an assault that had taken place. There are denials about those incidents happening, but you are saying that as part, as far as you are concerned, these are things that have happened. So that that part of, of my life was very was a very dark time. The particular assault that you know I, I, I am talking about now was was one that happened in our home. And for me it was seeing that person in a way that I've never seen him before. And I think the incident that got us to that point, for me, was one which I thought, you know, would make us very happy as a couple. Because he, he was angry at the fact that I, I went to, to work in, in, in Durban. And I remember coming back from Durban and um, arriving at home and, and finding him, you know, he was sitting on the couch waiting for me. And immediately when I got there, he said to me, you know, where do you come from? And I said to him, what do you mean when you say where do I come from? Because you, you know where I come from. And, you know, he continued to say to me that I'm, I'm not telling the truth. And he came upstairs. I remember he had a, a, a bottle of, of champagne in his hand. And I was trying to get out of the clothes I was wearing and he, you know, started spilling champagne on me. And with, with me trying to find out what was going on, he you know, started beating me up. And his main aim in everything, I remember him saying that he, he needs to mess up my face because this, this beautiful face is 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 messing things up for him and i remember having to cover my face because the shoes that he was wearing were really going to damage my face and you know he started hitting me in the ribs started hitting me um you know my legs and i i couldn't walk i crawled down the stairs at that point i believe that my my ribs were were broken because I, I couldn't really move this part of my body. And in doing that, I, I reached for, for my car keys and I, I ran out. And I remember him trying to, to, to block the driveway with, with, with his car. And I said to him, if anything, just allow me to leave. I then decided to call a friend of mine who, who is a doctor. At that time, he was stationed at um, Fosloras Hospital. I, I got there and, and he checked me. I remember him saying to me that my, my, my ribs were not broken, but there was a stretching that happened there. Obviously, Sumizu was calling, trying to, to figure out where I was and calling my family. And how we eventually got to, to speak was through his friend, Tammy, who, 
who called me and, and pleaded with me to come to his house so that he can talk to me about this, this incident. But that, that was just one of the many other incidents that took place. So are you saying that Tommy knew? Tommy did know, yes. What did Tommy say to you? Tommy told me that Sumizi is, is, is sorry and he, he promises that it will never happen again and that I should go back to the house. So, so where do you think this, um, this distrust came from? So, so at that time, I was starting to, to do some work within the influencing community. He said to me that his plan was to marry someone who's not in the industry. So me doing that type of work upsets him. What, what, what was he afraid of? afraid of? I think he was afraid of me finally getting to, to, to do some work because before we went to Paris, I was working a full-time nine-to-five job. And we had spent so much time going away that at the time when we were supposed to go to Paris, I had no leave days. And my boss then said to me, unfortunately, she can't allow me to leave. Without my knowledge, Sumizi sent an email to my boss asking her that she releases me to, to go to Paris because flights and accommodation have been booked. Yeah. And I, I was shocked and I had the conversation with him. And upon us having that conversation, he then said to me that I need to resign. And, you know, he, he kept on saying to me that you need to resign because this Paris trip needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And you need to resign because you, you can't be working a, a nine to five job. You need to resign because there are other business interests that you can take part in. So at the time when the influencing work came, I was unemployed and resigned mm -hmm. because he asked me to. So for me, it, it sort of didn't make sense that this person who asked me to leave my job and when those opportunities presented themselves, he became the same person to tell me not to go for those opportunities. So it was very, very hurtful that what then am I supposed to do? So the weird thing about it is that in the statement that he released following that audio leak, he says that he's actually supported in your career. Um, I guess even in the freelancing things that you were doing following your resignation. I won't lie and say that being in, in a relationship with him got me to a point where people started having an interest in who I was. I also don't want to sit here and say I stood there and, and Sumizi would go out there and find work for me or he would go out there and find opportunities for me because he really wanted me to be a, a, a house husband. That was his biggest dream. And when I didn't allow myself to be in that position or for that to take place, a lot of things started not really being okay in that relationship. So the opportunities, yes, came because of the interest that was there, but I won't say that he went out there and found opportunities for me. He didn't? No. Because he says that he actually did. He says in the statement, I've encouraged it. I've even through my own channels, uh, petitioned for opportunities for him to make money through my networks and I've amplified some of the work he's done through his campaigns. One of the biggest things in our relationship that we used to argue or fight about was me always having to thank him for where I am mm -hmm. or, thank, or, or thank him for, for, for what I have achieved. Yeah. It's, it's very interesting because a big reason why Sumizi and, and Titimba are not talking is because I, I lost out on work because Sumizi asked Titi to speak to certain people and, 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 and told them not to hire me. A big reason why Sumizi and, and Titimba are not talking is because so Mizi asked TT to speak to certain people and, 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 and told them not to hire me. So 
I chose to confront that situation very boldly because when I found out how I lost out on a gig, it was very hurtful that my, my husband and his best friend cooked up a story to make sure that I don't get that gig. So someone who says that they got me opportunities but had a fallout with his friend because I addressed something that they did is very weird for and me. And these are the Fergusons? These are the Fergusons, yes. Which he denies. He denied to the people, but he told me the truth. What did he tell you? He told me that he went and told T. Timba to speak to the Fergusons at that time because he was close to them, to not, to not hire me. Why do you think that that would be one of the reasons that would lead to their friendship breaking up, considering how long they've been friends for? When I decided to confront Titi about this, he then had to come clean and tell me who exactly told him to do that. Mm. So Sumizi was angry at the fact that Titi was not loyal enough to come up with a story to tell me so that I don't find out that he's the one who told Titi to go to the Fergusons. Mm -hmm. How did that recording come about? If you listen to the audio, which one? I thought the day I listened to it in Zokwata, and at all, maybe it's because of knowing the type of person that I'm dealing with. How do you think that whole conversation started? In my view, he was probably promised money for a special of some sort, so they wanted to check the content because he wouldn't have content without me. Right. So maybe I'm, I was good for content. I'm just like sabotage. How did that recording come about? So I had a, a conversation with the then executive producer of Living the Dream with Sumizi. He invited me in to ask me a question, and that question was, what is going on and why are you not being part of season five? And because I, I, I took him as a brother, I just wanted him to understand because he has always been there for certain conversations that would happen. Yeah. So this is a conversation I had with someone in confidence because I took him as a brother. And you know that there was um, a recording device or that the conversation was being recorded? Definitely I did know. And I think he said to me that he's just compiling his research so that he can go back to channel and tell them why Mohal is not going to be in season five of Living the Dream. There's another part in that audio clip as well where you make reference to the cheating and you say that you cheated right at the beginning yes. of, of the relationship. Yes. How far into the relationship was that? We were three months to the relationship. And I mean, it's, it's really not something to, to be proud of because it, it was hurtful for me to, to see him being that hurt. And I, I, I can't even sit here and say there was a reason for it happening. It was just me being, being selfish and not thinking about him. And yeah, that was, that was just not on. Yeah. How did you find out? So he, he called somebody that I was with, mm -hmm. with that particular person that was there. And he called that person and threatened them and told them, you know, they need to tell him who was there. And he eventually did. And he, he then called this boy and asked him questions, and that's how he found out. Yeah. Do you think that um, your, your sexual relations with Sumizi might have been impacted by your past relationships? Because you speak about that you don't love sex. Because in this season, he also says that the sex was dead. That's how blunt he describes it. It was very blunt, and I was shocked because he had never told me that before. But when you made the proposals? Proposals that were being made were to bring other people into the relationship, and he called that a fantasy. He didn't at any point say to me that the reason why we are bringing other people into the relationship is because I am not happy about the sex. Mm. So for me, it was about him trying to fulfill his fantasies and not about the unhappiness that he felt with our sexual relations. Yeah. How did that make you feel? I, I was surprised and, and trying to figure out why he didn't have a conversation with me 
if he hated my sex. And now making me question a whole lot of things that happened in the relationship, if they were really genuine or he was just doing them. Mm. Were you happy? I was happy until certain things started to happen. Like? Like the control and, and constantly being reminded that I bring nothing to the table except my pretty face. Were you happy? I was happy until certain things started to happen. Like? Like the control and, and constantly being reminded that I bring nothing to the table except my pretty face. Um, another hurdle that lies ahead for you guys now is the divorce. Yes. half. Half. Imagine. You don't just walk into somebody else's life, do fuck all, and expect to live with everything. That is in a corner. So Mizi speaks about you wanting 50%. Yes. Is that what you want? I was shocked yet again when I was, was told that he says that I want 50% of his, his assets. The very first letter that we sent to Sumizu on the 25th of June, 2021, stated thereof that I want my clothing, I want the car which he bashed, I want the money for the wedding, which belongs to the both of us. And that was it. And it clearly states in the same letter thereof that each party is to retain their assets. Each party is to retain their pension funds and provident funds. And each party is also to retain their investments thereof. So I was very shocked when he said I wanted 50%. Instead, in his response to the letter that we sent out to him, that he sent back to us on the 25th of July. He's the one who suggested that we go for division of joint estate. And to my surprise, he then goes on to his show and says, I asked him for 50% of his assets. When I have clearly just stated that I want my clothes, the car that he bashed, and the wedding money. So is that it? That is it. That is it. Did you get the clothes? I got some of the clothes. So those boxes that we see is not everything. Those boxes that you see in his show, I did not receive. Oh, those boxes you didn't receive? None of what he was holding in, in his hands did I receive. OK, and then the car? So the car merely, we had a fight in November 2019. And my very first thing to do every time I would argue with Sumizi was to go because he gets very physical and he gets very angry. And I got into my car and I wanted to take a drive. And he followed me in what he was driving then, which is the G wagon, and drove me off the road with my car. We then addressed it in the divorce papers that there is a car that you messed up, which you were supposed to, to pay for. And he, he started refusing and, and we still dealing with that at the moment. Mm -hmm. You say that um, he, when he's angry, he has this tendency of becoming physical, which means that the physical assault would have happened more than twice. Yes. It would have happened more than twice. Yes. Um, did you ever open a case? I didn't open a case. Why not? Because he had always told me that he, he would change, and I knew what would come with the case. And it's, it's never easy to, to just go into a police station and say that a Sumizim Songo abused you. I chose to keep quiet mm. and told the people that were very close to me what was happening and believed him when he said that he would change. Okay. Um, you, there's also another part to that settlement, in the, the divorce settlement that you want, and that is you speak about um, the money for the wedding. Yes. What money is this? So we did a a wedding special with Showmax, and we obviously got into a contract with production and channel to get a fee that would be shared between Sumizi and I. And where's the money? The money still sits with uh, Legend, with Bodida Television. 
Care to share how much it is? It is 1.5 million rand. Each? Um, no. Okay. For the both of us. Um, so, so, Legend is saying that he cannot pay over the money because Somizi has told him to pay the money over to uh, SARS. Uh, but I'm not sure how that conversation is going because I'm not facilitating it. So it's, it's currently being taken care of by my, my attorneys. Okay. So where's Mohale now? What is Mohale doing now? What isn't Mohale doing now? <laughs> uh, sure. So I have a company called Glam Troop where we do uh, metric dance makeovers and, and now we've ventured into doing metric dance events. I have a, a foundation called For the Youth Foundation which you know just sets to cater to any need that a, a young person has in South Africa where we are able to help. I am also a radio personality. I work for Opulence Radio as I do the morning breakfast show Monday to Friday there. And I am about to launch my skincare range Ooh. Uh, called Ella Home Cosmetics. You guys have been creative with those names. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Yes, uh, I am. I am about to to venture into that. Quite exciting. And then I am also a a media brand partner to quite a number of brands in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Tell me though, in conclusion, um, do you still believe in love? I really do believe in love. I think love is amazing. I think love is beautiful. That was beautiful. Yes. Would you get married again? <laughs> uh, I have nothing against marriage at all. And my, my experience was my experience. But if, if I meet somebody who makes me happy and um, they are happy as well, then round oh. two. Round two. <laughs> <laughs> and lessons learned. What are those, do you think? Definitely. Lessons learned is that I, I, I've learned to be very true to myself. I've, I've learned to stand firm in what I believe. And more than anything, I have learned that when other people talk about other people's sins, they will always look like saints. Mm. And I have to say, though, um, that your visibility is also helping a lot of other young gay men especially out there and well done on that congratulations thank you um i know that it also comes with a lot of uh, homophobia as well yes it does um but the struggle continues all the time thank you so much Mohan. thank you <laughs> thank you so much thank you oh.